Thank you all. I want to tell you how excited I am to be part of this webinar today and also honored to have been asked to present here today. Um, as Dr. Carr um, and Dr. Driscoll mentioned, during critical illness, plasma vitamin C levels drop to very, very low levels. And in our initial clinical research, we found that patients with severe sepsis had near scurvy levels of plasma ascorbic acid. And um, in the years of basic research that we did with a animal model of sepsis, we found that vitamin C could be very effective when administered intravenously, as Dr. Carr and Dr. Uh, Drisco have mentioned. Um, and, and so we put together uh, an application to the NIH. The NIH sponsored us for a um, phase two proof of concept trial that we entitled vitamin C infusion for treatment in sepsis induced acute lung injury or the citrus ALI trial. Um, we had seven medical centers between VCU, Cleveland Clinic, Medical College of Wisconsin, University of Kentucky and Emory University uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, participating and enrolling patients in this trial. Uh, next slide. We screened 1,262 subjects. Uh, because of our elimination criteria, we eliminated and excluded 1,092 subjects and randomized 170 patients for this trial. We found uh, and we uh, enrolled 83 placebo patients who were receiving standard of care for sepsis and acute respiratory failure by mechanical ventilation. One patient was excluded prior to receiving vitamin C who had a problem called acute eosinophilic pneumonia that presents very similar to ARDS, which is acute respiratory distress syndrome. And that patient was excluded. And on the vitamin C group, which was 84 patients, we excluded two patients who were uh, leukemic patients that were suffering from diffuse alveolar hemorrhage, which also looks very exactly like sepsis-induced acute lung injury or acute respiratory distress syndrome. Um, and that was 84 patients who received vitamin C and the same standard of care that the placebo patients got. Next slide. The vitamin C group received 50 milligrams per kilogram of body weight every six hours for 96 hours. This was close to what Dr. Risco was mentioning. Uh, each uh, patient received approximately 15 grams of intravenous vitamin C over the course of 24 hours, but they received it somewhere around 3,500 to 5,000 milligrams every six hours infused uh, 50 mLs of dextrose 5% in water over a 30 minute period. Next slide. We were very interested to determine how vitamin C could protect the organs that fail, especially in sepsis. And we used what is called the SOFA score, which allows a broad um, assessment of organ failure. The SOFA score is an abbreviation for Sequential Organ Failure Assessment Score. And it allows us to look at uh, the organs that I've listed here. Next slide. The, um, over the course of the five years that we were conducting this, we found that the clinicians who were caring for the ICU patients in the trial did not often order hepatic function studies. So we had to eliminate liver function uh, in the trial. And so what we published was a modified SOFA score, which in the literature has been found to be legitimate, uh, the modified SOFA score. Next slide. And as Dr. Carr mentioned, over the course of um, 
the time that we were infusing these patients every six hours for 96 hours, if you look at the orange column on the left, the blue line represents the placebo patients. And over 96 hours, 19 placebo patients died versus only four patients who were receiving vitamin C died. And when we looked at the cross section between um, the patients who were placebo patients and the patients who received vitamin C, there was no difference in the male female ratio or the age. Interestingly, however, if you look at what occurred after the vitamin C treatment, you saw the mortality that we were reducing over 96 hours in the vitamin C treatment group began to rise and essentially parallel that that was gotten in the placebo. Uh, next slide. And so in the placebo patients, we found that 46% of those patients, these were septic individuals who were in acute respiratory failure had died versus, next slide, only 30% of patients receiving vitamin C and this was significant at 28 days. And you can see the level of significance um, of P equals 0 0.01. The important thing to mention here, and Dr. Carr and Dr. Drisco mentioned this, by giving patients who are critically ill 50 milligrams per kilogram of body weight every six hours, we took the plasma vitamin C levels as high as five or six millimolar. Uh, versus at the onset of the vitamin C treatment, which were patients that were approximately 18 micromolar. And so we were able to increase the vitamin C levels by over 6,000 um, micrograms per mil. Next slide. Um, the important piece of this research and what every critical care doctor has been anxious to find is a therapy that can reduce mortality. And organ failure is directly related to mortality. And what you have in this graphic shows you that vitamin C effectively and significantly reduced organ failure of the sequential organ failure assessment score. Next slide. And we published this, as you can see below, in JAMA um, in 2020, um, and feel that it's important for clinicians around the world to consider this. We are now working with the Prevention and Early Treatment of Acute Lung Injury Network, the so-called PEDAL network, to perform a much larger trial using vitamin C in patients with sepsis. Uh, and has been mentioned by the previous two speakers, vitamin C is being actively investigated around the world uh, in patients with sepsis. And also I might add, we at Virginia Commonwealth University are also conducting a randomized double blind trial using the same dosage, the VCU protocol we call it, in patients with COVID pneumonia. And that is ongoing. And we are enrolling as we speak at Virginia Commonwealth University, we now have over 140 COVID positive pneumonia patients uh, in the hospital at Virginia Commonwealth University Medical Center.